Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing you another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the newest wave of McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 figures. This wave is going to consist of Commando Spawn, Nightwolf, and Baraka. Nightwolf is the one that I'm looking forward to the most, although I heard Commando Spawn is absolutely fantastic. And a third variation of Baraka, I mean, he's a cool character and a cool figure, but I'm not too excited for him. I ordered these three figures from WickedBazaar.com. They help sponsor this video. They're going to be providing me with an extra Nightwolf for a free giveaway. So if any of you guys that are out there are interested in a free Nightwolf, $20 figure, free shipping, brand new Mortal Kombat character, and McFarland doesn't make a bunch of new Mortal Kombat characters, he's all yours. All you have to do, drop me a line in the comments below. Let me know if you're interested in this giveaway, and let me know who your favorite Mortal Kombat character is. Like I said before, I order my figures from WickedsBazaar.com. There will be a link in the description below. I was able to get my three figures for retail, and they threw in an extra one just for you viewers to get a free giveaway, a chance for a free Nightwolf. They're a pretty new toy store. They deserve some attention, and I believe they have a deal where if you spend $40, you get free shipping. So not too hard to obtain. That being said, let's go and check out the packaging. Start off with Commando Spawn. The top says age is 14 plus. This is not a toy. I always think it's hilarious when McFarland puts that on stuff. This is a toy, just a badass toy. And right next to that, McFarland Toys. Mortal Kombat 11, Commando Spawn. Here he is in the package. This is gonna be Al Simmons and sort of some Commando gear. He doesn't have a gun, although he damn sure should, but Warner Brothers has a no gun mandate. Any officially licensed figures under the Warner Brothers banner cannot come with guns in any way, shape, or form. One side of the package shows Scorpion, kind of odd. Other side is Mortal Kombat 11. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and here is Commando Spawn's barcode. On the back side, once again, Scorpion, I guess they change the packaging. They all show Scorpion now. Next figure, and this is a brand new Mortal Kombat character to the McFarland line, Nightwolf. Pretty cool looking figure. Looks like he has an axe or a couple axes, bow and arrow, also a display stand. Scorpion again, Mortal Kombat 11. The backside, Scorpion again, big surprise. Packaging is very dull for that reason. Here is Nightwolf's barcode. And then we have this variation of Baraka. Baraka here, he's got a brain, his sort of claws, display stand. This is going to be the third variation. They have one with no shirt, one bloody version, and then this one with some sort of tunic top. Scorpion, Mortal Kombat 11, Scorpion. Here is Baraka's barcode. So to further ado, let's open them up. And just another reminder, there is going to be a free giveaway for a Nightwolf McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 figure. Yes, you heard that right. A free giveaway, completely free to whoever wins. All you have to do to enter the contest, drop me a line in the comments below, let me know you're interested in this figure, and let me know who your favorite Mortal Kombat character is. All right, now that we got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They all come with a display stand. Spawn has two different energy effects for his arms. Nightwolf has two axes, a bow, and some arrows. And then Baraka has his sort of bone sword and a brain. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation. We'll compare them with a bunch of other similar type action figures. And at the end, we'll compare them with a bunch of action figures from different various companies. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Before we look at each figure individually, let's check out a quick look at all three of them. So here's Commando Spawn. Upon first glance, he looks to be pretty much reuse of the Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. Got a bandana on his face. Cape looking good, same cape as before. One giant sort of boot. Grenades. Permanent pistol. I guess it's okay to come with a gun that's permanently attached, just not one separate. Very nice rendition of Spawn. 
Then we have Nightwolf, also looking really cool. Dark skin, tattoos, Some little teeth on top of his head here. Like what I'm seeing. Finally, another Mortal Kombat character to add to the mix. We're getting far too few of these, very, very slowly. And then we have Baraka. Look at that sick face. Pointed ears, teeth exposed, bumps all over his grotesque body. He's got sort of tunic here, skirt type thing. Let's take a look at Commando Spawn first. I know he's the one that a lot of people are looking forward to. I remember when McFarland made that 12 inch statue a couple years ago. I thought the thing looked really cool and thought it would make an awesome action figure. And here he is, finally. So let's take a quick look. This variation of Spawn actually is Al Simmons. He's geared up, military attire, bondolier cross, bullets, grenades. Looks like it's a Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn body, but we'll check out the reuse in this video shortly. Grenades, pistol here, big boot, double jointed knees. Double jointed elbows. Overall, so far, so good. Nice version of Spawn. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. You can pull down the bandana a little bit, but his head is not completely sculpted under there. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and let's start with the boring stuff. All three of these figures comes with a McFarland display stand, two with McFarland stand, black perfect circle, says Mortal Kombat on the bottom, it's got one peg with the pegles on their feet, it's very thin, very basic. Then he has these energy effects for his hands, they're a little bit different. They're both cast in a semi-transparent green color, sort of looks like a flame, it's going to attach to his hands. This one's a little bit larger. Here's Spawn with these energy effects attached. Each one of them sort of fits into the hand. Looks pretty good though. Almost like a sort of fire or energy. Now those are the accessories that he came with. What he needed to come with are some guns. It's not McFarland's fault, but Warner Brothers. They have this crazy no gun policy. I really just think they're trying to show parents that they quote unquote care but effectively, it's just really stupid. Here's a gun that actually came with an older McFarland Al Simmons before he was a spawn, back when he was a soldier. Fits pretty good with the spawn. Here's another gun that works for him. This came with the McFarland spawn Soul Crusher figure. A much bigger rifle. And here he is with a couple of SMGs. These came with a NECA Harley Quinn figure. This guy. Definitely needs some guns. Hope you guys have some extras if you buy this figure. The upcoming McFarlane gun accessory pack will be great for figures like this. Now to look at the differences between this Mortal Kombat 11 Commando spawn and the Mortal Kombat 11 traditional spawn. I thought they were the same body, but looking closer, they're almost completely different. The heads are different. You can tell from the sort of texture on the skin area. Looks like the arms and everything is different. This spiky sort of armored piece on top does appear to be reuse. The actual body is completely different. This guy has sort of an armored look, a lot smoother on the skin area. This guy has a lot more texturing, sculpting detail. I'd say the cape is 100% identical, sculpt wise. This armor thing's identical. It's going to be a little bit different on this side. I'd say the big boot appears to be identical. Beyond that, they really look to be all different parts, although very similar. Then, looking at this guy, next to the deluxe spawn that came with a the throne, they also don't appear to be sharing any parts. So, looks like a lot of new scoping detail on Commando Spawn, although very similar to what's come before. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 7.25 inches tall, which is going to translate to just under 18 and a half centimeters. 
Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side, a little bit obstructed by his bandana there. Can look up that far, down about that far. Pretty good looking up. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, just increasing the range of motion there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows that go in that far. His wrist can rotate and it is going to be hinged as well. He's got ball joint in his torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another ball joint in his waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him very good range of motion in his torso area. Legs, pretty much does the splits. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation, it's pretty good on this guy. Legs go forward almost all the way. Back, about that far. Double jointed knees. Then his ankle here goes forward and back. Can tilt rock, can rotate, although a little rough to do with the boot. Other one, you can pretty much see it. Does everything you'd like, plus toe articulation. Now let's check him out, next to some other spawn figures. Here he is, next to the standard version of the Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. And here, next to all of the variations of the Mortal Kombat 11 spawn. Quite a bit of variety here. And here, next to the only traditional spawn they've made in the new spawn line. This is the deluxe spawn that came with the throne. Here he is, next to all three variations of the Mandarin spawn. Then with both versions of the Gunslinger spawn. There's actually a third version with a horse coming soon. Here he is, next to Raven spawn. I don't actually have the second release of this guy. He's sitting on my pile of loot at Big Bad Toy Store. Then, next to Ninja spawn. Now all these different spawn figures, Mandarin, Raven, Gunslinger, and Ninja are different characters. They're not Al Simmons. Different people that were turned into a hell spawn. This Commando spawn, though, it is Al Simmons, just a slightly different variation of the suit. Now it's like a Nightwolf. He has the McFarland display stand, two hatchets, and then a bow and arrows. They're all made from a green energy. Nightwolf here is a powerful shaman from the Makoto tribe. He has the ability to turn into a wolf, hence the name Nightwolf. I'm most excited for this character, as he's a brand new Mortal Kombat character. He debuted in Mortal Kombat 3, and I don't think he appeared in a game until Mortal Kombat 11. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his face here, he's got a war paint. He's got some sort of teeth or animal skin on top of his head. Hair looks pretty good. He's one of the most prominent Native American characters in video games. You can see he's got tattoos or paint all over his body. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Pretty pleased with what I'm seeing so far. You can see some little furs and other things hanging off him. It's a good looking figure. I sure hope NECA makes a feral predator from prey so I can put these two against each other. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. And just a reminder, I do have an extra Nightwolf figure that I'll be doing a free giveaway on. If you're interested, drop me a line in the comments, let me know you're interested in the giveaway, and let me know who your favorite Mortal Kombat character is. I'll announce a winner in about a week. Now let's take a look at his accessories, and we've already checked out the McFarland display stand. Now let's check out his axes. They're made in a semi-clear green plastic, made of some kind of energy, you can see. A little bit of detail where they're going to handle. Then we get the blade up top. Here he is holding one of his axes. He can hold either one or both at the same time. Now let's look at his bow and arrows. He's got three arrows, but they're all permanently stuck together. They have these little holes at the top. Then we have his bow, pretty large. It's got nice sculpting detail on the bowstring as well as the rest of the bow, although you lose a lot of that because of the green coloring. Here he is holding his bow. He can pull back the string with one hand, 
And then I have the arrows sort of just gently laying on top there. I don't know if he's supposed to be firing three arrows at once. Or if you're not even supposed to put them on the here. But if that's the case, then why'd he come with the arrows at all? He can also stow away his bow onto his back. Although it barely stays at all. These accessories would also work really well for your McFarlane DC Green Lantern figures. Here's Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart using some Green Lantern constructs. Like I said before, Nightwolf has the ability to turn into a spirit animal, a wolf. Here's Nightwolf turning into said wolf, and then turning back into his human form. He also has the ability to use some animal aspects of a bear, an eagle, a rhino, and probably more. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up about that far, down about that far. Can tilt his head from side to side, giving him a good amount of personality. Shoulders. Our ball joint goes out about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increasing the range of motion a little bit. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrists can rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. And his torso here, it's got a ball joint, can rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist, rotate around, forward and back. Can't get too much out of the torso, a little more out of the waist. Together, giving him, eh, not a lot of range of motion in his torso, but enough. Legs go out this far, a little bit less than 90 degrees. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation is pretty much non-existent. They go forward that far, back, not much. Double jointed knees below that. Then his ankle here, forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. Now let's check him out. Next is with our action figures. And this is the only Nightwolf figure that I have. Not the only Nightwolf figure out there, so I can't compare it to any of those. Here he is, next to the DC Direct, Batman Incorporated, Man of Bats, another Native American superhero. Now let's take a look at Baraka. This is the third variation of Baraka that McFarland has made in their Mortal Kombat line. He is a Tarkatan, a fictional species residing in the Outworld. He has the ability to retract a pair of bone blades from his forearms. He debuted in Mortal Kombat 2. He comes with two blades for his arms, a brain, and a display stand. But before we take a look at those, let's take a look at the figure. So let's take a look. You can see his face. It just screams evil. He's got his teeth fully exposed. No lips. Pointed ears. Red eyes. He looks creepy, grotesque, and awesome. He's got a tunic covering up the top part of his body. All these bumps and growths and spikes all over him. Looks like double jointed elbows. You can see a bunch of other bones protruding from his forearm area. Double jointed knees. I can see a wrap around his arms. Wrap around his knees. Boots with the toes exposed. Pretty cool looking figure. Can't wait to stack him up with the other Barakas they've made. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Look at that thing. It's hideous. Now let's check out his accessories. And oh, we've already looked at the McFarland display stand. Here's the large claw that's going to come out of his forearm. Made of a bone-like material. See, it's got this little peg that's going to plug into his arm. Here he is, without the claws. And here, with his claws attached. He also comes with this brain. It's got a little hole at the top. So you can just slide the claws through. It's got a nice amount of scope and detail of the brain. Here he is, holding up this brain on his claw. 
He's very proud of himself. He just won a match. And he's probably going to eat the brain. And now let's check out this figure's height from bottom to top of his head, standing at about 7.3 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 and a half centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with this head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. You can look up, not too much, down about that far. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a pretty large butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area. Increase in range of motion and covering up that big, large gap. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbow, only goes in about this far. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Hmm, it's a little bit stuck here. There it goes. He's got ball joint his waist, rotate around, forward and back. He has another point of articulation his torso, but it's completely useless with this tunic thing here. Legs, they go out about this far. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward about that far, back, not much. Double jointed knees, go back that far. Then his ankle here goes forward and back. Can rotate, can tilt, rock, and to articulation. Now let's check him out next to the other Baraka figures. Here's this variation of Baraka next to the original release. I do believe the majority of the sculpt is the same, although the paint job is quite superior, especially on his face and head. The only real difference, they added that top tunic part. I do think this third Baraka is going to be my favorite of them. I mean, look at those two heads. This new version on the left has a far superior paint job than the original. And here he is, next to the bloody version of Baraka. Here are all three variations of Baraka, and they have made some Baraka figures from previous Mortal Kombat games. Here's Baraka taking on Nightwolf. Round one, fight! Until Commando Spawn comes in and takes them both out, because he's just a badass character and skin in the game. Here are all three of these figures, geared up and ready for war. Now let's check them out, next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. Here they are, next to the most recent assortment of Mortal Kombat figures. Bloody Joker and Bloody Kotal Kahn. Then, with the assortment before that, this wave consisted of Liu Kang, Joker, Shao Kahn, and Kotal Kahn. We actually don't know what the next wave of Mortal Kombat figures is going to bring or even if there is one, although I'm pretty confident they're going to make one, really hoping for some more female Mortal Kombat 11 characters. They've made maybe half the characters they can make for Mortal Kombat 11. They're releasing these things very slowly. And here they are, next to the most recent Mortal Kombat 11 spawn variations. Here are these three figures with the entire McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 collection. I have every single one of the figures every single variant, and we have no idea what's coming next. And a little more of an aerial view of the entire collection. Here are these figures, next to a Mezco Mortal Kombat 10 figure. Way different scale. Now let's check them out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how they fit in both scale and style wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. Since these are McFarland figures, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check them out next to some other McFarlane Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarlane Toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, next to some more McFarlane Toys, these are from different various video game properties. And now, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, Next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So I would say, 
These are three very nice action figures. Commando Spawn. I would say he's not my favorite spawn from Mortal Kombat 11, as I'm really fond of the traditional spawn, but it's probably a better action figure. Nightwolf, brand new character. I think they did him justice. Happy to add another Native American figure to my collection. And then Baraka. I was annoyed they were making a third version, but he is definitely the best of the three, by far. If I were to rate these figures, I'd give Commando Spawn an 8, Nightwolf an 8, and Baraka a 7. Commando Spawn really needs some guns, but it's not McFarlane's fault. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. Just a reminder, having a free giveaway for Nightwolf. Thanks to Wicked's Bazaar. Drop me a line in the comments below. Let me know you're interested, and tell me who your favorite Mortal Kombat character is. This is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, Add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.